Come on. Hi, my name is Jessica Perez. I'm Pedro Hernandez's mother. Um, it all started with a news clip. They put my son's picture in the news. In news 12. Wanted for shooting a 15-year-old. I wake up at 10 in the morning to see my son's picture. The way they phrased it, I thought my son got shot. I'm like, he was here. When I walk to his room, I'm like, thanks God. But then again, what's going on? You understand? Um, like I said, I, I went to school for criminal justice for you. I know a little bit about the justice system. I know you. anything you said is used against you, blah, blah, blah. I know all that process. I asked my son, me and you, did you shoot somebody? No. Was you there when that, I don't know that kid. I'm your mother. I'm your lawyer. I'm your teacher. I'm your doctor. I'm everything. And as a single mother, they know if they're going to have sex for the first time, they got to come to mommy. They didn't have a daddy to go to, so anything they will tell me, and especially as boys, good and bad. So I asked them, Pedro, mom, no. Okay, so then we're walking into the precinct, and you're turning in. I'm turning you in. But you're not speaking to nobody unless I'm present or your lawyer's present. I have a lawyer that my mother knows for many years. I contact him. He said, oh, that's like a $10,000 case. It's attempt of murder. We don't know what they have. I'm like, he's innocent. I don't care what they have. He's innocent. Okay. He said, oh, just give me. I can go in today with you to the precinct. Just give me to tomorrow because I'm out of state. I'll be back tomorrow. He was out by Delaware, blah, blah. I called the detective squad who's in charge of the case in News 12, and I gave him the name. Oh, Detective so-and-so. It's Brady. Detective Brady, I believe it was. Um, I'm the mother of so-and-so. You're looking for my son for questioning. I'm going to be turning him in to you, and depending on the questioning, I'm going to allow it. Oh, I don't want him for questioning no more. I want him to process him, because we for sure know he shot somebody. I said, okay, not a problem. When and where? Oh, um, I'm going to be leaving the office today. It's a lot of paperwork. Just turn him in tomorrow at 7 in the morning. I'll be back at 7 in the morning. I said, okay, not a problem. I'll be there at 7 in the morning. But as a Spanish mother, I um, grew up in the hood. I'm sorry, but I, that's where I grew up. I know cops not like knocking on your door at 5 in the morning when you're sleeping. Who wasn't in my house? It was in, not me and not my son. My kids stood there with their stepfather because I remarry again now. I left to my to my mother's house. I stood there at six, seven in the morning. My husband gives me a call that they knocking the door down, the warrant squad. The detective had told me to turn him in the next day at seven in the morning. I went by his word, and when but I was ready to go to turn him in, the, the cops was already there with a warrants and everything to knock my door down. I told my husband, let them in, put them on the phone. I said, he's not there and I'm not there. I'm on the way to the precinct. Oh, it's better if you come with me. Let us turn him in. I said, I don't need no escort. I know the way to 42nd Precinct. I'll turn him in myself. I don't have a problem with that. Long story short, I had to turn in my 15-year-old to Precinct 42 for an attempt of murder he didn't commit while his picture was all over the news for something that they claim he did. He gets released. No bail. Released on his own recognizance. No bail. No nothing. Then he had nothing on the grand jury to base it on him. But the case stays open for six months. I wasted my savings, giving $4,000 to this lawyer ahead because I had to pay the rest in plans. And my son is innocent. But, okay. My son gets released. I get cops coming in my building now. Asking the super, let me see the cameras. Let me see what time he comes in and out. I lived there 15 years. Obviously, a lot of people talks. A lot of people tells me, you know, cops is asking questions. If your son comes in, what kind of kid he is? Go ahead, speak. Tell them. Y'all know what kind of kid he is. I don't mind. That's when the harassment started. After that, they put the lights. I lived in the fourth floor. The bright lights that they put when an incident happened on the street. But in this time, there was no incident that happened on 168. The incident happened blocks away. But they put the lights face into my apartment, yeah, right cool. bright on the apartment. I started recording all this. I had to get black shades to cover those lights because it was Times Square inside my house at nighttime. That's how bright it was. Two, three weeks later, um, 
he gets released. He gets released six days after he gets released. A few days later, cops are stopping him in the streets. They put his pants down, saying, oh, it looked like he had a weapon in between his legs. Okay, that was summertime. How, how can you have a weapons in basketball shorts? It doesn't make sense. If you're a cop, you know that's not possible, but then again, okay. They started that, those type of harassment. It got to the point, September came, they rearrested him, saying he fit the description. This is, this, this is what tripped me out. He fit the description, uh, a Hispanic with a white tee and long hair. My son was riding a bike with all his friends through Cortona Park. The cops stopped them. They brought two people in a car. First they brought one in one detective car. My son saw them shaking their heads saying no. This is by what my son told me from that day. That car left. The cops came again. And again, somebody said no. The cops left. The other cops that were there told the officers that had my son stopped in his bike, put cuffs on him and arrest him. When we go now, this time, they process him to family court. I don't know what was the, the charges at that time. They process to family court. When we go through family court, in family court, you don't get released in bail. They hold you until you see trial. He spent a whole week and a half in the juvie detention. He gets released, case not dismissed, but um, not able to prosecute. That was what they gave me. And they gave me that paper a year later. They wasn't able to prosecute. For me to find out after that they never had a witness, that the witness has said my son didn't do it, but they still put handcuffs on him and took him to the precinct and processed him for something he didn't do. That time came, I was like, no, this is not happening to me. I started looking for help, looking for help. That's when I saw his, his face on the news. It was already kind of December. I just had my son, you're not going nowhere. If it's not with me, with your brothers, with your sister, you're staying home. I don't want you in the streets, you're not going nowhere. But you don't keep a 15 year old locked in an apartment. We don't have a backyard. You understand? If it's Florida, like I told you, I lived there before. We have a backyard, go to the backyard. But you cannot keep, it's like having them in cage, like animals. All we have is the park from the corner. All we have is them going around riding bike. It doesn't make them criminals. But for the cops, if, if, if you ride too much bike around it, you must be selling drugs. If you're standing too long in a corner, you, 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 you have a gun on you. You understand? That's the way they think it. But it's because we're black and Hispanic. Because mm -hmm. white people do it in their neighborhood. Yes. They, they it didn't happen. It didn't place. happen. You understand? <laughs> no, go home, kids. In Florida, the most they got was go home, kids. Th that didn't happen. So I hire him. I said, listen, this is what's going on. They accusing my son of things harassing him this that I put it down to him I explained to him I want you to get to the bottom of this I want you to get who did the thing I don't care what you got to do I, I, I need I need my son's name out their mouth that didn't stop again February came the case got dismissed the first case that they put his new story on February it was February something that same day that it got dismissed, he got rearrested by the same detective. What detective? What do you mean? For a new shooting with the same witness. And what's the name of the detective? David Terrell. Um, Morales. It's like the, the the little the little squad. You know, they always go like mm -hmm. the little nice squad. He got the, uh, once again. Same witness though. Same witness. How I know it was the same witness? Because how I know it's the same witness? Because there, now, he gets arrested. Let me see what they charging him with. I take pictures of everything right there. I don't care who the lawyer was. You know, they appoint a, a lawyer. I take pictures of everything, go over everything, or the accusatory instrument. I read everything. I make sure everything. I call Gomez. He's got to be arrested. Where he was at at that time? I said he was home. That was the day of the snowstorm. That was the day went to the prison. I said, yes, I said he was home. That was the day of the snowstorm. He goes to the priest and um, you're not questioning him about? They say, oh, you don't know him. Yeah. You, you must not know about him. He told me he was know what, him. that he's being arrested for things he didn't do, that his picture was put in the news for something he didn't do, or you must not know him. Okay, he says, okay, nobody's talking to him. He got an attorney, nobody's talking to him. Thanks God for me living 15 years in the same place and being a good tenant, everybody loves me. I managed to get the recording of the building, people going in and out, 
the time and everything. And I did a recording from the recording of the building. The investigator did it. Guess what he did? I said, good. He takes it to the district attorney this time. We forget about the precinct. He goes straight to the district attorney. We have proof that this kid is innocent, the whereabouts, the times, and what he was doing. There's a God up there, and I, I have faith in God. That's my number one. He, 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 he's, he's my lawyer. He's my everything. In my home, he's number one. You understand? At the same time, two minutes off, two minutes off, my son was in, in sandals picking up the big grocery food shopping that I had did in Walmart. And I stopped in front of the building. They all come down and get all the bags. And guess who was picking up all the bags, in and out, getting all the bags? Pedro Hernandez. Now, now one thing, she showed that. I showed that video to District Attorney David Slot. I have that recorded on my computer, too, because he said he didn't meet with me. So I have him meeting with me on video, because it's never my word against theirs. It's always my video against their lie. So I showed him that. You know what he said to me? We're gonna dismiss the case. I'm gonna know. He said, I'm gonna get the original. I'm gonna subpoena the building to make sure times, video works correctly. Mm -hmm. Once I get the original, I'm dismissing the case. Now, even Those though I words. This I, is the district attorney. Now, even though I showed him the video showing the time and date, the time and date of the murder, of the attempted murder, he's not there. He's here. Can't be at two places at one time. And he never left the building. And it's all on video. Okay? And then he had. They didn't have with that. We are one witness. All right, and so now, we they, are one witness. so here's the thing. You know what he does? He makes the kid wait 180 days. Because after 180 days, what do you have to do? You automatically have to dismiss the case. So he doesn't keep his word, he lies, and he does that. That's my first dealing with Assistant District Attorney David Slot. All right, and then the cops went back to the building and told her super, who the fuck are you to give the, the videos to a prime investigator before you give it to us? Yeah, then I got a letter. I got a letter from management that I should not be sending investigators. Wow. And I'm like, okay, why not? My son's say, life is I, I, I said, why not? My son's life is the line. If they're accusing my son of something, the super almost got fired wow. for letting the investigator record from the monitors downstairs playing it. Because you need to put in a code to play it. Not anybody could just go and press play. You need to put like so a password. They so they knew it was the super. They don't even give it to the security because that's the way they manage the securities from our building. We have like a security on the bottom. So the super almost got fired for letting an investigator record. Yeah, he didn't even you understand? No, I the second time, the second time it happened, he let me see it. He said, I'm going to let you see it for the comfort. But I don't want your investigator here. That's when he showed me the video of the police coming in the building trying to see the videos. Every time there was something around that neighborhood, they would come in, try to see him. He would tell me, he would tell me, Jessica, they here again. Jessica, they came again. They asked me to play the video for them, and I keep telling them why you keep harassing this kid. But just, let, just let me ask you a question. Was this because Terrell had already made sexual advances at you? It was, no, it was, it was in, in, in the middle of it. Terrell already had asked me to date him, Terrell, and I told them no. For years, I know Terrell since he worked in the high school where my kids went to. He was like the officer going there. Terrell already. But at that moment, I wasn't thinking of Terrell. That's why I'm just thinking the way things went. That moment, I said they put his face on the news for something he didn't do. After that, me as a cop, I would think, well, if he was caught for a murder in this area and now a murder appeared, let me go speak to him first. Because he was, he was the one that did the murder in the, in the area. You understand? Gotcha. So if you're a rapist... And you live in this building and a rape occurs, who are they going to go to? To the rapist. So after that one time they put his picture on the news, that's when I thought, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that it was because of that. The harassment started because they forcibly accused him of something he didn't do. That, that, that was my meaning at that time. Not to think that further down the line, Terrell always been trying to, oh, bring me some Spanish food, this, that. No, no, no. Come on, I'll look out for your boy. You look out for me. No. No, that, 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 that's his ways. You got teenage boys, he wants to get in your pants. That's, that's just the way he is. But at, at that moment, I would not put anything on Terrell because it would have not got from one extreme to the other. You understand? For me, it was just he wanted to date me, but my son was getting pinned by the same detective for being accused in the news. Not to think that after a while, it became a plain harassment that I started recording the cops in the lobby of my building 
with pictures of my son and showing it to people. You, you seen them doing anything? Let us know if you seen them. Coming up the stairs, because they know the young kids from my, from my building, they go smoke in the stairs. They will come up the stairs and arrest the boys from the staircase. So it became that, just plain harassment on that building, on, and on Pedro, on Pedro, on Pedro. I will not have Pedro outside. I will have Pedro inside at the moment. I even sent them to Florida for a month in vacation. But it was like plain harassment. After that case got dismissed, that he went and told them, I'm proving you this kid is innocent, and you still going to leave this case open for six months? He left it open for six months, having the proof in his hands that that kid wasn't, and he, they didn't even have a witness saying my kid did anything. They just had the Stephen Whitlam no, no. saying they did that. They have a witness, but the problem was is that my evidence proved that the witness lied. Yeah, but that's we got to the bottom of it. That's right. To, 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 to that, in that moment, we didn't it know was that. just that little, you know, little plain harassment. He's black. He fit the description. You know, it came to that. Case dismissed. Again. But he did 180 days. He, no, but, no, he had to go to court for the whole six months. Appearance in court. And cops, oh, you got an open case. What's your name? Oh, Pedro Hernandez. You got an open case. They would, in the loudspeaker. Uh, oh, you in the, the streets court. with an open case? Through the speakers of the detective yeah. cars. Like, uh, that, that type of harassment. So they put his face up in the precinct. Yeah. All right? I went upstairs. When I went to see him, they had his picture up. What? And you know what they tried to tell me? That this woman is a female Tony Montana of the box. <laughs> I wish she would have been out. No. That's, that, that's what I that's told them. Exactly. I and they, and to this day, they still, they just lied again. They try to say this kid belongs to a gang. And they, he said he did, and he never does. He never did. He doesn't have a tattoo on him. He doesn't have anything. In, no, right. the district attorney, that's right. one of the things he mentioned now when we requested to lower the bail. Oh, I, I don't want to touch the bail because we got information that he belongs in gang. I spoke to the security from Rikers Island. What that my son belong to? None. And He's fact. putting the gang members in Rikers Island now, and this is to I can show you a text. Now they segregate them in the four build in a, in a juvenile. They accept they separate them. them in the classrooms. I don't know if you guys have been locked up. They have them in different classrooms. You know what Pedro's managed to do now? He's putting different gang members in one class to prep them for the GED class. And this is told by Ms. McLean, the assistant principal. She called me herself and told me, you know what your son is doing right now? He's our face from Rikers Island. He has managed to keep these kids concentrated just to be like him, pass his high school diploma in one same classroom. You talking about blood crips? That in history, kids cannot be in the same. That's good. Is that, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's a blood spatch right there in Rikers Island. If you put kids, okay, so you go, you know what they got Pedro doing? What's his summer job right now? Teaching, That's teaching good. the kids. They I will show you place. the message of, of one of the teachers saying, your son did great today teaching the class. You understand? But this is, the, this is why I'm, I stand by him. This is why I stopped doing whatever I have to do and, stay, and stand by him. Because I asked them, are you innocent? Are you guilty? You have a mother. You will tell your mother if you did something. You understand? Maybe you don't want to make her feel bad, but that's the only thing you have in life. You understand? And like I told you, the first face you see on the business. Exactly. And the only after a year, that's the only one you see. I lost both in there. I know. Okay. So he he got he got that confinement in me. So that's why I stick by him. After all that started, that's when he came into him. And even after he submitting proof to the district attorney, they will let him go out. R&R. &R. Who's R&R &R in an attempt of murder? If they don't have a case. Reschedule, 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 dismiss and sealed. Same detective, same district attorney. Apparently, with the new evidence we found out, they have pressured that witness to like three times. Yep, we see. She keeps it's not one detective. It's it's true. It's it's no. It's detective David Terrell and, and Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Brady. Brady. Daniel, Daniel Brady. Brady. All right. And now this is the this is the routine they play. They play the worst cop, the bad cop. <laughs> one okay? go out, one go in. So the worst cop is Terrell goes in and says, "I'm going to crack your fucking head. I'm going to slap your head against the wall." I have that on video. Okay. I'll show you all this one. She's all done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you all so you can see that everything that this woman has said to you right now. Is 100% the truth because I have it on videos. Video don't lie. And what she what she was finding out about when Jessica was telling me was, well, oh, this detective, detective. But then I found out it wasn't just Detective Daniel Brady. Now it's another Detective Dwyer. 
as well. So I got three detectives in the night shift who are all influencing the night shift officers to do the same things that they're doing. And then having the officers violate the civil rights and come up and bring the people to the precinct. This is why all those 17 officers I, I said before that are under investigation, they all belong to the three to 12 shift. There's and no coincidence. Not only that, back in 2012, right, you see, I tell you, there many years. Back in 2012, that precinct was swiped clean. Well, apparently, they cleaned it off. Because their own, their own sergeants, their own, they started calling their sergeants rats. Cause started saying what they were doing, forcing them to arrest, forcing them. And this is all back in the news. I got like news article that I, I have is safe now. This is from 2012. Two. You understand? No, 12, 12 again, 12 again. All this, they got cops taking out that precinct. So called they clean the precinct out. But it's like, it's like always, you leave one, that one rotten apple is gonna damage the whole bag. Mm -hmm. So even, you got even the rookies coming in, trying to meet their quarters, doing all these tickets, for you standing in front of your building. Ma'am, I live here. Oh, I don't care, go fight it in court. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. You're trespassing in my own building? I don't have my ID on me, it's upstairs. Let me, mom, throw me out my ID from the building. Oh, you're trespassing. Yeah. The kid lives here, everybody's, yo, what you doing? They live here. We don't care, here's the ticket, trespassing. Littering, you put your, your bottle of water in the floor, pick it up, you know, things like that. They got the rookies coming into the precinct, walking, harassing the kids. But it goes back to what you're saying. It's not even the precinct right now. It's like it comes from a bigger, a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Why? They don't do it in white neighborhoods. They're only doing it in our neighborhoods. I say our because we all belong to the same kind of yes, neighborhoods here. You understand? It's it, they doing it to our young kids. How can they become lawyers? How can they become doctors? How can they become a president? They want to. We, we had a black president, so a Spanish president, another black president wouldn't be a problem. How can they become all that if we're getting all these kids getting petty charges and bogus charges for something they didn't do? Understand? So it's like. Let me, let me ask Manuel a question. Manuel, the, so is there any witness? Let, let me ask you this because I heard rumors that, I, and maybe you can verify this, that. Brady and Terrell, they've used the same witness over and over again in different convictions. Oh, is no. this is this person still is this person also involved in Pedro Hernandez's case? Well, there's a lot coming out on September 6th, and there's evidence that I can't reveal mm -hmm. until September 6th. No, right. Right. but okay. I'm gonna say that there's a bunch of witnesses that they've been using to falsify cases. It's not been one. It's been a bunch. All right, I had another case, and she knows who they are. Uh, Jessica knows Celine Wilson and Julio Velasquez. They did three years in jail for murder. Detective Daniel Brady and David Terrell and Detective Wire arrested these two kids. They said they committed a murder. The kid calls me from jail and says to me, I'm innocent. I says, everybody tells me. Make me believe it. He says, yo, I'm at a funeral. So I says, all right, I'll call you back. I'll come see you if I find the evidence. Guess where I went to? Yeah. And guess what I found? The camera would have been standing there all day. You know what I like about the video? Am I right? And that's what I had him on video. Won their case. Now they had a witness saying, yeah, he did it. <laughs> Who forced them? Detective David Terrell. Yeah, and you bring heat and detect the wire. That's what I found out in that case. So to answer your question, I can't answer your oh, question. All right, right. But, but, but there's a lot but, of stuff going but, on. September 6th. But how listen. Can we, how can we get Pedro out of or Well, there's two ways well, right to get now. Pedro right now. Okay? Um, Dave, this, detect, this district attorney, I've proved Pedro innocent on numerous cases. On all the cases that she's hired me with, because to be honest, she hired me for one case. And now I've become a family member because it's been one <laughs> case. All right? So we went beyond hired for one case. All right? And it's like, how you can help is, is that his mom can raise two houses, which value 250000 And we, we have that right now. We went into the bail bonds with two properties, my car, title, everything. everything. 
All right. It, man, it brought up to 250. That's the, that's the, time, the racket right there, the bonus. But they wanted to make at it 500,000. At that time, it was 15,000 cash to put up. So we didn't have all the cash at the moment. We started the paperwork. That was in January. I said, when income tax hit, his sisters, we all work. So everybody was going to chip in a little bit. The district attorney one proved. Here's your proof. We all chipping in. He got sisters too, like four sisters. So when we go to the bail bonds, the bail bond lady said, I'm sorry. After we spent days putting everybody to go sign, showing income um, proof, everything. But we got a problem. I said, wow, you got a surety. And it's fully secure. I'm like, well, what is that? I'm showing I'm, I'm, property. A surety fully secure means that if the bill is 250000 if it's in property, you got to get 500 in property. Because mm -hmm. the judge saying maybe the, the, the bail bond is playing with the numbers. So the judge won 500 in property. And, and, and hold on, let me, let me explain that to you guys. Because I did a little research today on the surety and the secured bail. They, in the history of maybe just the Bronx itself, from what I've researched today, they've never done that in an attempt murder case, no. especially with someone who's never had a conviction in their life. No. They usually do it with major murder cases that there's overwhelming evidence that this person is guilty, right? With him, there's no evidence that he's guilty. So we, I don't even, like I questioned the bail bondsman today. I said, well, what interest does the judge have in this case that he, he also, because they went to the appellate division. Now, that's a great they, they went to the appellate division, the appellate division to right? try to get the appellate division to make the judge lower the bail and the appellate division rule with the judge. So I asked her, well, what's the interest in the judge that he put a secured bail on his kid? Because like I explained to you. I can answer that. 250,000 K. Well, I, I think I know too. Okay. Cause if they, if he, if he goes against the DA publicly and lowers the bail, it's almost like admitting, yo, we fucked up. We messed up here. No, that's not it. I'm well, gonna go tell ahead. you what it is. Judge Barrett, okay, is the DA's wet dream come true. And I'll tell you why. Because this judge, all the ADAs try to transfer their cases if they can to him. Because he, you could have, your lawyer could be Jesus Christ. He's still going to side with the assistant district attorney. Okay? Mm -hmm. If the assistant district attorney says, she's Tony Montana, he's going to believe her. If she says, you're Hitler, he's going to believe you. And, and that's, what he, that's what he did on this case. He's the only judge in that courthouse that does this all the time for the ADAs. The other judges don't do that. The other lawyers, you can ask any lawyer in the Bronx, say his name, and they will tell you, Judge Barrett is an ADA with a black robe. Okay? There's evidence in this case. Remember, I already gave them evidence proving this kid innocent. I already brought witnesses to their office proving them innocent. I already showed them the shooting victim, and I have it on video here too again, saying that they threatened to bash my head beat me up if I didn't lie and say some light skin, Pedro Hernandez. And they arrested shot. him too. And they arrested him. Terrell arrested him coming out the hospital. Yep. And but so he said, oh, you're going to tell me who did it. Oh, you're not going to tell me, so you're getting processed through the system. Yep. He got processed through the system, the, the, the kid. And the case was Another dismissed. kid, a, a young kid. Sean no, don't. They only go to teenagers, wait, I see. Wait, wait. No, they start from the school. That's, that's, they start the, from the prison is a little bit old. further. A further from the high school. They start from, in, in, in all that. They have them like, you go and